hello friends. We are picking up right where we left off from last week's reading vlog. Welcome to a new week, whatever day this is going up. Actually, happy weekend because this is probably going up on a Friday. So I hope you guys are having a great weekend at this point. I just did my recap of last week. So let's get into what I've been picking up since then because I have started a couple new things. So the first thing that I randomly decided to pick up when I had a little bit of time yesterday is Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson. This is super short. It's less than 200 pages, I believe. I don't know how to describe it. I'm only on page 26 but it is like stunning and breathtaking so far. I hate this font like with a passion. I don't mind the photograph on the cover, but the font <laughs> does not do it for me. So all I know so far, I don't even really know the synopsis to be honest. I didn't even read the back of this book, but it had been recommended by quite a few people whose recommendations that I usually enjoy. And so far it's about love, passion, affairs, marriage, trust, like intensity, that fear of abandonment, things like that. And the writing is like just absolutely stunning. Like this, if this paragraph, if you like it and it jives with you, then pick this book up. Louise, in this single bed between these garish sheets, I will find a map as likely as any treasure hunt. I will explore you and mine you and you will redraw me according to your will. We shall cross one another's boundaries and make ourselves one nation. Scoop me in your hands for I am good soil. Eat of me and let me be sweet. Like that is just beautiful. Um, what's the other one? This, this passage I love, it says, nevertheless, I will push on. There were plums and I broke them over you. You said, why do I frighten you? Frighten me. Yes, you do frighten me. You act as though we will be together forever. You act as though there is infinite pleasure and time without end. How can I know that? My experience has been that time always ends. In theory, you are right. The quantum physicists are right. The romantics and the religious are right. Time without end. In practice, we both wear a watch. If I rush at this relationship, it's because I fear for it. I fear you have a door I cannot see and that any minute now the door will open and you'll be gone. Then what? Then what? As I bang the walls like the Inquisition searching for a saint. Where will I find the secret passage? For me, it'll just be the same four walls. That is so stunning. And then there's one more. August, we were arguing. You want love to be like this every day, don't you? 92 degrees, even in the shade. This intensity, this heat. Sun like a disc saw through your body. I just think the writing and like the theme of this and she just really gets like love in intense relationships and so I'm having a fabulous time reading it. Um, this will probably just be one that I slowly read throughout the month. I'm not going to sit down and read too much at one time. Then the other book that I picked up this morning walking is Song of Silver Flame Like Night by Amelie Wenzhou. And this makes me want to pick up the Blood Air trilogy now, but I'm so glad someone recommended this to me because I am eating it up so far. It's so good. I'm only on page like 60 out of like 450, so I'm not super far into it, and I am living for it. There's two POVs. It is following this last kingdom that was conquered and colonized by the Elantians, and so they've sort of taken over everything, not just like the city and jobs and everything, but they've made everyone that's native to this, is it Chinese mythology? Like all of the people can only have one syllable names and they've just taken over everything. And so it's really dangerous for people and they're just under a very strict rule and you will have a punishment of death if you break their rules. So we're following one girl who works at this like tea house as a singer, but she is not satisfied with that life as of right now. And then um, she has this connection with her mother. She had this like symbol burned into her at her mother's death when the Elantians came and conquered everything. And so there's a little magic going on there. And then we're following this other character who's sort of like in disguise as an Elantian, but he's part of the, oh God, is it? Shoot, I forget what hit, what they're called, the hen. And so he knows about magic and the Elantians have this, this magic power with metals that they use. So metals are a really important part of it. And so far where we're at, the two characters just meet up and he kind of knows something's going on there, but I haven't like gotten to the point past that. And it's going to be so good. The writing is great. I'm loving the characters. It seems very well developed so far. I like learning about the history and world building. So I'm super pleased with how this is going. I forgot to mention in last, in the end of last week's reading vlog too, that I have been reading A Kingdom of Fire and Ash. No, I don't know. The second book to um, 
from Blood and Ash. So a kingdom of gold and fire. I don't know what it is. Anyways, I'm about 30% of the way through that right now. And I don't know, it's, it's definitely like young adult feeling, but it also has just a readability quality. And I'm listening to it. As I said, I think the audiobook is definitely the way to go for me because I'm less critical. I feel like when I'm listening to something and all of the things that sort of would make you cringe or be a little skeptical of it, she sort of like explains throughout it. She explains like why she has this insta love and is drawn to him, but like it makes sense, the plots. And I don't know, I really like where book two is going. That's all I can say. We're dealing with like vampire type of older historical setting. And it's not like a vampire urban fantasy. It's everything is a little bit different, but the world is really opening up and we're learning about a ton of new things in this one. So I'm having just a great time. So I will update you guys later because I need to do some more filming and I have a lot to do today. Today's outfit, I have to go run some errands. I have to go, this is not the same best as before, by the way, the other one was leather, this one's not. I have to go to Home Depot, get another roller. It's a long story, but I had to use both on the black wall because it was like trash and it wasn't working well. Then I have to go do some gift shopping, some me shopping, I have to go to the bookstore because I'm like out of books to read that I'm interested in right now. And what else? I have to go pay my winter taxes, which were, <laughs> insanely expensive and get Paul some candy for Valentine's Day at the candy shop where I live. So let's go do those things. Oh, let me show you, I guess, the entryway really quick, the little before. Um, this was in there with a mirror and a coat rack and everything, but yeah, just plain white. This is the mud room, my garage, my basement, the laundry room. So the kitchen's this way. I don't know if I ever gave you guys a full house tour, but yeah, this is what it looks like now and I'll show you guys when it's all done. I am very excited. I should say, by the way, that I will be listening to the second book in From Blood and Ash. God, I really need to learn its name, but that's what I'll be listening to while I do all my running around and errands today. So far we've made it to pay my taxes. We made it to the homemade chocolate store for Paul's Valentine's Day. I made it to Home Depot to get the roller. And then I had a little haul over here. Well, no, I made it to Ulta for a gift and Victoria's Secret for gifts for me. <laughs> Time for the bookstore. I need to stop spending money for the love of freaking God. Let's go look at some books. I need to buy some books today.
Okay, so I just got a couple books because I actually needed some because like I said earlier, I'm getting to like the last book on my TBR shelf that I want to actually read right now. And I had some self-control. So let me show you the ones I got. The first one that I decided to pick up is one that has been on my radar forever. And that is The Pariah by Anthony Ryan. I love this cover still. And I just think it sounds like something I'll really like. And it's like a chunky, nice, long fantasy and then the other one i hope some of you guys are excited is the grace of kings by ken Liu, another epic adult fantasy you guys it's so funny though because anytime i'm in the bookstore any other time in life i'm like the girl who minds her own business never like barges in but when i'm in the bookstore it is so hard for me to not like talk to people who are looking at books i just want to be like just you know this book and just you know like anytime they're looking and there was a guy next to me and he was looking at Brandon Sanderson and like trying to figure out some of the order and I just so badly wanted to be like just chat because like you know the thing you love you want to talk about the most so it's funny but I I held some I had some self-control and restrained myself from barging in on stranger conversations but um yeah because one time I did that and the guy was looking and he said have you read this book and I was like yeah it's really really good and um it was The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson he goes okay what's it about and I was like all of you guys who've read Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings that's a very hard book to give a short synopsis summary of after you've read it even you're like I've read it twice now and I would have a hard time giving like a brief summary in a couple words so anyways that was a funny time but let's go home and paint okay i've been listening to a ton of a kingdom of flesh and fire that's the name of it and i'm, I'm loving it i honestly adore it. it's just so easy to listen to but i thought i would show you step one of the painting how it's going just a very rough trim action going on here but i'm ready to roll i'm realizing just now the color doesn't look anything the same in this video it looks like orange brown in the video and it's not it's a very like oh i don't know how to describe it's like a very light terracotta or salmony type of color not pink at all but maybe it looks a little more normal there hard to tell we're making progress just on my lunch break but i realized i never showed you the finished product of the mudroom entryway type of thing so i'm gonna leave the lights off for now to see if maybe that's showing it a little bit better color. But this is what we're working with, guys. So it is, I don't know, a very light terracotta. It's not pink at all. It looks very peach in this video, but like I feel like the color drastically changes whether I zoom out or zoom in. This is like regular video. And then when I zoom out, it looks not the right color. So I think this looks pretty accurate. Let's see when I turn the lights on. <clears throat> Mm, that looks that looks pretty accurate. Anyways, this is hideous. I hate this right now. So I'm going to get like a little stand for right there to put our keys and everything on and get rid of this because it's like messy and I hate that so much. But then I don't know when you come in like it just looks a little nicer and the rest of the house. I think it flows pretty good. So that's that. Aren't these so pretty? Yesterday was Valentine's Day and I worked kind of late so we didn't get to do much. We're doing dinner this weekend. These are my second Valentine's Day flowers, by the way, but I'm just about to eat some lunch. I've been snacking on these, which are the best things in the whole world. The sweet chili ones. Oh my God. Obsessed. Anyways, I'm going to eat this and then hopefully I can update you on what I've been reading because I have got some more reading done. Okay. We're starting a new puzzle that I got for my birthday. I think one thing we like to do when we do puzzles is miss all of the corner pieces on the first try. So this is a Not even what? the corner, the border. The border pieces. Yeah, this is gonna be our third time going through all of the pieces to find all, because we're missing three. Sure? We were missing like seven and we found the rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let me turn this around so you can see what puzzle it is, cause it's cool. So it's like all first lines in books and I'm surprisingly bad at it. Like some of them are pretty easy. You definitely know some that I don't. Yeah, but let us know in the comments if you recognize some of them. <laughs> yeah, tell me, pause this and see what books you see. I was thinking that it would be super hard, but I actually don't think it's going to be that hard because the font is very different, obviously, and there's like a lot of white, but we've got most of it just, oh no, we're missing four pieces, Paul. One here, or did that just separate? That probably, yeah, that just separated. Oh, geez. We'll show you if we make any progress. What are we going to watch? We're going to watch, no. The last? Starting. We're going to watch The Last of Us. Yes. Because we're way behind. Mm -hmm. And we're also watching Grey's Anatomy right now. So if you're a Grey's Anatomy fan, mm -hmm. don't spoil it for Brittany. No, we're only in like season two. Barely. I've never seen Well, it. we're about to finish season two. So you oh. know what goes down. 
But we really like The Last of Us so far, but neither of us have ever played the game. No. But it's pretty good from like an outsider perspective, I feel like. Yeah. Different take on zombies. So we're too scared to watch it in the dark. That's why all the lights are on <laughs> while we puzzle and watch it because we are... Wimps. He's worse than I am. I am. <laughs> I am scared. Okay, quick update guys before work this morning since I failed to update you yesterday. We did end up getting a little bit done of the puzzle as you probably saw though. I feel like I can do puzzles in very short increments or I just get super burnt out. Anyway, sorry about the dark lighting. It's gonna snow today. It's cloudy, it's gray, it's yucky. I am dying for spring. So I've been doing quite a bit of reading the last couple of days. I've been making lots of notes in hopes that it will make my wrap ups a little bit easier to film and remember. So first thing to update on is Keeper of the Lost Cities, Stellar Loon, book nine. So hard to say this because it's so dark out. So, I mean, this is still cute, but I feel like it is too long. They're all such long books. I mean, I guess it's only about 700 pages, 750, something like that. So, and obviously it's like middle grade size font, but I know I'm not the target audience, so it is hard to critique this. I really feel like it's so repetitive and we could cut out so many pages by stopping going over things again and again, but also due to the target audience being quite young, I feel like it makes sense that they do that so that the kids reading it can understand and really because there are a lot of plot points to follow in this rather large series. So I mean, it sort of makes sense that that's happening, but also as a 31 year old reading it, it's so like repetitive and redundant. I'm like, for the love of God, can we move on? Just so much of talking about feelings. And usually like I would say I would love that in an adult book, but in a middle grade style, it's a little bit harder for me. So there are times where I'm like, oh, can we just move on? But I'm just past the halfway mark now. So just past 50%. 
And yeah, I'm gonna keep chugging along at it. It's my ebook for the month. So I think I have a pretty good chance of finishing it by the end of February, hopefully. And because I love this cast of characters so much, I'm enjoying it even the long parts. The only thing I have to say is Ro, the character, if you're familiar with this series, is like one of my least favorite characters ever because she says like Captain Hunky Hair and like just like these nicknames she gives to everybody drives me insane. But then again, for the younger audience this is aimed for, I'm sure they love it. Then let's talk about the physical book I've been reading, which is Song of Silver, Flame Like Night. I always forget the name of this one. And yeah, now I mean I'm half, I'm past the halfway mark, just barely at this point. And it's really good. It is one that I feel like is quite predictable young adult fantasy. And I enjoy the magic. I enjoy the setting and the mythology. We have traveled to like this ancient, I would sort of say like magic school to practice the ancient arts of the way that they do their magic. And so I obviously love that setting, but it is quite tropey with young adult where, you know, the main character is going to learn rather quickly and gain control of her powers quickly and be the one to save the day. And like, I get it, those are tropes, but maybe I'm just like a little troped out at this point. I don't know, it's it's a me thing, it's not the book thing, but I can't really fault it because once again, it's for a younger audience. So being young adult, I think I'm just a little bit burnt out on like young adult and middle grade this month. Definitely gonna be moving towards some adult fantasy for next month um, for the majority of it, I would say, just so that I don't get burnt out like this. But the only thing I have to say about this, like I love the magic and setting and everything I already said. I love the idea and the concept. I hate the main character. She is so rude and just like ungrateful. And I get that she... Like she says, she's a, a poor peasant that comes from nothing, from the slums or whatever at this tea house. I don't care where you come from. You can understand that people are helping you and saving you and you can treat them with respect and be polite. And she's a brat and I hate that. It's not in a cute way at all. And so I find her like intolerable. Um, but I really care about the story and what's happening with these seals and what's happened with the past. So I'm enjoying it. I would say there's like a 99.9% chance that I will pick up the sequel to this. So like with those critiques, I'm still definitely enjoying it. Uh, but yeah, I should finish this within the next couple of days, I would say. And then my audiobook finally has been A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I think I finally got the name right this time. That's been just a fun listen. It's entertaining. I really like our cast of characters and what we're moving towards. I found that a lot of my critiques of the first book are sort of lessening in this book, meaning that we didn't really get a good understanding of the world in the first one. And I think that's for a reason because the main character didn't have a lot of understanding of the politics in the world and the history, even though she was supposed to, like it was false almost, can't say that. Even though she was supposed to have a good understanding, things aren't always what they seem. And so this one, we're just learning so much more about who else is in this world as in other types of species and what really happened in history. And I really like this world. I really like the politics and I'm really anxious to like see the outcome of the main goal, which I can't say, which obviously would spoil book one. And then I also, I really like the will they, won't they back and forth between our two main characters. Like I really feel like the chemistry there is really good and I really like Hawk and I really like Poppy. And so, I don't know, I just, I enjoy reading their romance and sort of what's happening with all of them. And I like learning about this world. The only thing I have to say is, girl, Jennifer Armentrout, what were you thinking? This is supposed to be like a historical type of setting from my understanding. And the characters use modern phrases all the freaking time. And I'm not generally somebody who's too nitpicky about that, but this one, ooh, it drives me insane. I'm like, no, they wouldn't be saying that. They're not saying that. Why are, why are you acting like they're saying this? So that drives me insane. But that's really my only critique right now. I mean, if you're reading a book with insta-love and a lot of YA tropes, I mean, that's what it's gonna come with. So I'm really excited to keep going. I think I'm just over halfway through this as well. So I need to make some breakfast and get to work. Maybe I'll try to show you a little clip of the cats or something before I do that.
supposed to be filming Ronnie. Look, she's letting me use her as a pillow now. <laughs> Did she get shy? Yeah, she's camera shy. Okay, that's all the puzzle we got done. And um, Paul, what are your thoughts about, what's it called? The Last of Us. Mm. We just started episode four. We're like partway through episode four. I, I think it's good. Oh, into the camera. I think it's good. Um, episode three was the best. good. Episode three was really, really good because it was like heartfelt and that slice of life. And it was a really good, believable love story within that amount of time without spoiling anything. However, I'm getting kind of bored with it. I feel like it's very slow paced for my taste. And a lot of the suspense doesn't lead anywhere. To be fair though, we were cooking dinner while the last episode was on, so. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. A majority of the last episode. Okay, you're not wrong, but still it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all of the puzzle we've gotten done. Yeah, we'll have to check in with more puzzle. I wonder if you're gonna edit this from yesterday because this is totally the same shirt I was wearing yesterday. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in because it's a thing that, like, other vloggers do, like, a lot of vloggers do. If you don't, I don't know. It's a home shirt. This is, like, a home sweatshirt. Yeah, and I only wore it yesterday, so, like... It's, like, fine. I wore it for three hours at night yesterday. I'm wearing it for three hours at night tonight. I do the same thing all the time. Look at this munchkin. Everybody watches my vlogs only for the cats. Okay, good night. Okay, who remembers from like, how long ago was August? A lot of months ago. We were listening to Hyperion, my favorite book, and we made it through like the intro and the priest's tale. And then we started Kassad's, the military chapter. And then life happened and so we stopped, but we finally finished. Not the book. General Kassad, the yeah. The second chapter. <laughs> we finally finished Kassad's chapter. So chapter two, we just made it to chapter three. And I'm loving the reread experience of it. Even though chapter two is still like my least favorite of the whole book, I'm really glad to be done with it. And I think that was like why it took us so long because it wasn't your favorite out of the two either. No. What did you not like about it? There were a lot of very in-depth no. sexual experiences. You didn't like that. Cause see, that's the interesting part to me. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think the weird thing was like, like you can't say any of that. Spoilers. Are you going to just cut that out? Yeah. I don't like that it's like in-depth detail military stuff at times. That's what's boring. I don't like the simulations I, I and don't, stuff like that. I don't think I mind that part. I think a lot of it's just the overarching plot. It seems like a bit of foreshadowing, but you're not sure if it's foreshadowing exactly what you think it is. It's not going to make sense. It's really hard to talk about without giving anything away. Do you have a little more appreciation for what we do? Kind of. <laughs> um, but don't you think the end was more interesting? The yeah. end of the chapter? Yeah. Where you're like, oh shit, what's happening? Um, so I'm really excited to continue. I can't remember if the poet's tale is the third chapter because that's my favorite, but I also love the scholar's tale and I think he's going to like... The detective. Braun Lamius. Yes, the detective. Took me a second to think of that. So we're continuing on, hopefully going to listen to more of it today. And now I'm going to give you my update while you go do whatever. While I leave? <laughs> That I leave mid video? <laughs> no, I'm gonna go in the other room. Carly, are you eating the blanket? Carly, stop eating that basket. Carly? She's such a brat. Why are you doing that? She does that to make herself throw up. Where's your sister? Is she in the library? No. We found her. She's not going to let me get close. <laughs> All three kitties. Okay, my update time. I finished a book this morning, you guys, and I don't know about you, but it's like my favorite feeling ever when I finish a book and get to start a new book. So my physical book that I have finished and that I've been reading is Song of Silver Flame Like Night by Emily Wenzhou. This is a young adult start to a new fantasy series. It's Asian inspired. And I didn't, I could never remember the name before. 
but the Blood Air trilogy. So I'm considering actually picking that up now because I thought this was really good. I know I told you guys some complaints in the last couple of updates about the predictability and I do still think it was rather predictable, but I don't necessarily like fault the novel for that. I just think that's part of maybe the young adult nature, the target audience. But when I was complaining about things coming a little too easy or things of that nature, I don't want to give anything away, but things are explained and there's a reason for everything. And so I guess I sort of have to like take that back and go into this with like faith that the author knows what she's doing. Um, and also the main character gets way more likable as time goes on. And so there was really only a period in the middle where I thought she was really annoying and graded on me. And then that changed a lot as we went through. And she's definitely not a new favorite character by any means. In fact, I like the male characters then in this more, but she at least wasn't annoying the whole way through. So don't let that stop you from picking it up. And the whole time I'm wondering like, where is this dragon on the cover from? And then obviously we get all kinds of answers near the end. So I don't know. I thought this was a fantastic book. I thought it was so much fun. If you like young adult fantasy, I highly recommend this. Um, and even if you mostly read adult, I think that it definitely is geared towards the younger audience so you might find that it's a little too simplified but that being said it's more thorough and complex and in-depth than a lot of the young adult that I've read recently so I think people from either age range could enjoy it um there's not too much romance in this in fact it's just a very small bit there's a lot of folklore and history and myth and legend and demon gods and magic and um, oppression and good versus evil and like the old art way. I wish that I could remember like what the schools are called. The Hin schools of the last kingdom. Um, like these orders and the religion basically that they practiced. And I just thought it was fascinating and super fun. It's some of like my favorite type of mythology and setting to read from. And so I really can't complain. I would love if this could be like an adult novel just for like the more in-depth expansive experience of some of the training and schools and history and stuff like that. Like I think that if it was adult like this whole book could have been like two books to be expanded upon but that's only saying like my love for it. I thought it was really good so if this has been on your radar or you've thought about picking it up at all then I highly recommend doing so and I'm excited that I finished it because now I get to pick out a new novel and uh, well actually I think I'm going to finish Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson first and then I will pick out a new like fantasy book to start. So that's where I'm at with my physical reading and then my audiobook. Um, we did a lot of cleaning and stuff yesterday so I only have I think like five hours or so left and that's at 1.5 times speed so it's more than that but actual listening time is five hours and I'm still loving it and we just got to a realization when I was listening to it this morning that like I've sort of been waiting for and so this is like the addictive fantasy romance that I'm dying for because most of this book has been a lot of the explaining of the history and the politics and really just exploring that relationship between our two main characters like the love interests and I think that that really goes to show the chemistry with each other more than the first book because it was so insta love in the first book and so I'm really having a great time it's not super plot focused at all in this one I mean there's definitely like something they're trying to accomplish but more so than action-packed we're just spending time in one area um getting people to believe something sort of and then working towards that so I'm really really excited to see what else is going to happen as we move forward and get into the next book because I've heard not good things about book three but you bet that I'm going to be continuing on because I'm having a fabulous time with Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I don't know if I said that. That's the book I've been talking about this whole time. Um, yeah, I'm loving it. That's all I could say. And I'm loving this and I cannot wait for book two because book two is going to be super fun and exciting too. So those are most of my updates. I have read more of Keeper of the Lost Cities and we're back at like a little bit of a school setting now with like the friend group. And so I'm thriving. I'm living for this part because I love when all the friends are together and I love the school setting the most. And so things have kind of taken a turn to what I'm really enjoying. And I think I'm like 65% of the way through that book or something. So slowly but surely making our way. I don't think in the last vlog I showed you guys the office totally put back together. So, well, I got this blanket for Paul for Valentine's Day. It's like a king-size quilted blanket. 
But here it is dry and put back together. It looks a little nicer. You can see it's not all shiny now that the paint is not wet. But yes, I'm loving working at this office and it's just like cozier, you know? It's good when you have a good working space. Loving it. I forgot to show you guys making this cheesecake. I'll show you the final product in next week's vlog because it's for my mom and sister's birthday tomorrow, but it's a white chocolate raspberry cheesecake, which doesn't look very good right now, but it will later. Okay guys, I'm actually gonna end the vlog here, even though I didn't start it until Monday and today's Saturday, but I feel like it's long enough and I don't want this to be too long. We've got a lot of things going on this weekend that I think I'll put in next week's reading vlog. So I know that this week had a lot more like B-roll footage, bookstore, lifestyle stuff. Let me know if it was too much, too long, what you prefer. I like your guys' feedback. I know a lot of you guys said in the last one, you don't care if I'm finishing books in the vlogs, so you just like seeing it all. So let me know if you want to see more lifestyle stuff, more of what I'm eating, doing, shopping, doing around my house. Um, I'm just going to do a quick little recap about everything I've been reading this past week. So I obviously told you guys I finished Song of Silver Flame Like Night. I hope that's the name of it. That was the last clip. And then still having a great time with A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I'm trash for this series at this point. I'm absolutely loving it. And then my ebook, Keeper of the Lost Cities. I haven't read that at all this weekend. That's like my ebook. And then this is what I'm going to work on finishing up this weekend written on the body. So I've only made it a few more pages in than last time. So yeah, not too much more reading. Paul and I are going to hopefully listen to more of Hyperion on our way out for Valentine's dinner tonight. And yeah, you'll see all of those updates next week. I know there are some things that you guys want like house tours and plant tours and things like that that I will definitely get to slowly but surely. But little bits at a time for now. So I hope you guys are having a great end of your week, start to your weekend. I hope you're doing something that makes you happy this coming weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, leave me an avocado because if you don't know, like I have a lot, <laughs> I have a lot of avocados. This is my bed. I'm 31 years old. My boyfriend is younger than me, but not that young. <laughs> and this is our bed. Don't hate on it. Anyways, leave an, leave an avocado if you've made it this far. I'll see you guys next time.